Hi friends, welcome on board. This time I have designed a bug boost converter circuit that I want to share with you. Here is the top side of the board from different angles and here is the bottom side. At the heart of the circuit is a well-known controller chip, this one. The part number is XL1619. You have probably seen it used in various boost converter modules. Some designs even use two separate inductors to make a buck boost converter. But this design is different and you probably won't find something similar. Instead of two separate inductors, this circuit uses a bifiller common mode choke, this one, which I calculated and wound by hand. This approach improves current handling, output voltage stability, and lowers current ripple compared to two separate inductor designs. The input voltage can range from 9 to 30 volts from this terminal and the output is fixed at 12 volts from this terminal. Although you can fine tune it a little between 11 and 13 volts using this multi-tone potentiometer. The converter can deliver up to 2 amps as long as you use a proper heatsink for the controller. It is true the controller is rated at 5 amps but that 5 is the switching current maximum at 25 degrees C. Doesn't mean, this doesn't mean the output current. So as always I designed the schematic and PCB using Altium Designer and I have uploaded the project files to my Altium 365 cloud space. Just follow this link in my YouTube video description Sign up on the Altium website and take advantage of the registration bonuses. Then use the second link, this one, to download the PCB projects for free. One great use case for this converter is in vehicles, both 12 volts cars and 24 volts diesel trucks. For example, when you start the engine in a 12 volts car, the battery voltage can drop to 11, 10 or even 9 volts if the battery is weak. That drop often causes electronic devices to reset. The same problem happens with 24 volts vehicles too and this converter takes care of it. Plus, it makes it easy to run 12 volts devices off a 24 volts system as a buck converter. So anyway, that's it for now, let's go to the next step. I will explain the schematic and PCB live on the Altium 365. All right, here is the home page of my Altium 365 cloud space. I have uploaded all of my projects here so far. This is the latest one, by the way, which I will discuss soon later. You can create your own space too, and it's free. Just follow this link in my YouTube video description and sign up on the Altium website. You will receive some nice license offers. Then open your space, upload your PCB projects and share them with your friends or teammates. But you might ask, why should I do this? What's the catch? Altium 365 has many features but one stands out. It makes teamwork easy especially for complex PCB projects. Imagine a team where one person works on the power supply, another designs the digital circuits, and someone else handles the RF parts, such as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Another team member creates the bill of materials and buys the components. And finally, one teammate prepares the component libraries. If you use the traditional method, I mean the email, to exchange project files and comments, things will get messy. It leads to lots of attachments, misunderstandings, errors, and frustration. This will delay your project, stress the team members, and affect the company's income and reputation. 
but with Altium 365, the whole team works on a secure cloud platform. Everyone can leave comments, apply edits, update component values, and more, all in one place. If you have worked on a complex PCB project, I'm sure now you feel the difference. So I won't explain more, follow the link and try it yourself. Here is the latest project by the way, when I double click, the project documents open right away. This is the schematic document, this one is the PCB layout, and this one is a 3D view of the PCB board. So let's start from the schematic. So here is the input terminal, it goes through these four capacitors. It starts with these two big ones and then it goes through these two small ones and the small ones are placed as close as possible to the input pin or this V in pin of the controller. If I show you this on the PCB, what I mean is these two SMD capacitors. This is a common technique in designing the DC to DC converters because the input pin of the converters will receive some inrush currents and we have to dampen and reduce these inrush current for the sake of lower noise, lower EMI and stability of the controller. So don't forget this. The same thing happens for the output. After the Schottky diode, we place the small capacitor like this, the C9, and then goes through these two bigger ones for noise reduction. So don't forget these two techniques. The rest of the circuit is similar to a boost converter except for this bifiller common mode choke. We have two types of common mode chokes, sectional and bifiller. This one is bifiller. This is the uh, feedback loop and the resistors for the feedback. This multi potentiometer to adjust the output voltage and set it on 12 uh, because the optimum output voltage is 12. And finally, this LED to indicate that there is a correct voltage at the output. I intentionally use this part number for this Schottky diode because this Schottky diode is uh, delivered on a small D pack package, but it's strong. Uh, it's rated 20 amps, otherwise, you can use 10 amp type Schottky diode. I prefer this because it won't warm up that much in using higher currents. Uh, let me explain the PCB. This problem is because of my mouse. Uh, it has some glitch. So the first and maybe the most important point is the distance between the switching pin of the controller and the adjacent inductor in this case, or maybe the Schottky diode in case of a buck converter, this distance or this copper plane should be as small or as short as possible because we have some high switching current in this area and if this copper is long, it will act as an antenna and a very good candidate for more than enough or more than standard radiated emission and, you, and your circuit will not pass the EMI. It has some effect on the on operation of or and performance of the converter, but the main effect is uh, very high EMI. And then this uh, Schottky diode. So I put it uh, next to the inductor, and then, as I said, this uh, capacitor next to the Schottky diode, and this thermal relief for the capacitors that are close to the heat source not specially for this circuit because this shot kit out is is a strong but it's a good practice that you always follow because uh, the heat source like this shot kit diode will warm up the capacitors if we do not use or we do not implement such a thermal relief for the capacitors pins and if the capacitor if a typical capacitor warm up it will reduce the lifetime of a capacitor dramatically and the capacitor will dry out too soon because the ESR increases sooner than 
uh, as it should be. The next point is the grounding. So if I show you the bottom ground and uh, bottom layer, so you see this plane is the ground plane. Very low impedance for the ground plane and no loop in the ground. I implemented the same thing for the top, top ground. So you see this plane is the ground plane. No loop and very small impedance. This also has a good effect in uh, EMR reduction and output noise reduction. Uh, nothing very much, isn't it? I think I covered everything. Uh, if you have a question, just let me know in the comment section. Let me go to the next step and I will explain this bifiller common mode, common mode truck and how you should wind it. So here we go. The picture on the left shows the selected toroid core, a green blue iron powder type, along with its part number and manufacturer, which is micrometals. The picture on the right shows the details of the truck, the magnet wire length, thickness, number of strands, and the pinout or footprint. As you see, you will need to prepare two identical magnet wires. Start winding the chalk using both wires together and finish the winding on the opposite side of the core. That will be pin 2 and 3. The starting points of the wires will be marked with dots. After you are done with the winding, use a multimeter in continuity mode to check the pinout. Since both magnet wires look the same, it's easy to mix up the ends. This test helps to ensure you are soldering the correct wire ends to pin 2 and 3. So that's it with the chalk. If you have any question, just let me know in the comments section. Let's go and test this board. All right, welcome to the testing section. I have connected the uh, converter board to the power supply. Here is the output voltage and this is the initial current which is 100 milliamps. So the output voltage is 12 and this multimeter screen shows the input voltage. So the input voltage is 9 and the output, is, output voltage is 12. Now I increase the current to 1 amp because I have not put a heat sink on the controller here so I don't want to damage the controller, uh, so I don't go higher than 1 amp. In your case, if you install a heatsink, you can go as high as 2 amps. So no problem, you see uh, the output voltage is 12 and can deliver 1 amp without any problem. Now let me increase the input voltage and go as much as my power supply allows, I think around 29 or so. So let's go So this is the maximum voltage out of my power supply So as you see the converter works perfectly and the output voltage is pretty stable So that's it for the test just build the circuit and have fun don't forget to share and subscribe we will do something else in the next video.